Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you of the M10 RBFM. This tier 5 turreted French premium tank destroyer is going to be a reward which is perfectly achievable for the upcoming D-Day challenge which actually is just starting today. And hopefully you checked out my video about it yesterday so you're fully up to speed and you know what you're going to have to do, the, the very little amount of gameplay that you're going to have to put in to be able to get this tank. But that doesn't mean anything if the vehicle isn't any good, right? And that's why I'm here today to tell you what I think about the M10 Sir Rocco by quickly showing you how it stacks up to its competition and then following it up with some gameplay so you can really see how it plays out. So let's get started. So let's compare the Sir Rocco to the vehicle that is based on the Tier 5 American Standard Tank Destroyer, the Wolverine, and also its competition, the T-67. So these are all Tier 5 turreted tank destroyers, and immediately we notice that while they all use 76mm caliber guns, Sir Rocco is slightly better, with a slight rate of fire advantage at 19.35 compared to the 18.75 that the other vehicles have. It also has two extra millimeters of penetration on its standard rounds. But before you jump to it and say, oh, is this tank just going to be flat out better? When you fire premium rounds with this vehicle, you're going to notice that it actually has less penetration than the other two tanks. So turreted tank destroyers aren't much if they don't have good gun handling. And while Sirocco has slightly worse aim time than the other two vehicles, it's got better accuracy. Better dispersion on the move and also when turning the turret than the Wolverine, but slightly worse than the T-67 when turning the turret. So keep in mind that if you're completely stationary and you're turning the turret with the T-67, you're going to have way better aim time. Thankfully, the flexibility that all these vehicles have with 10 degrees of gun depression allows them to work ridge lines. And as they've got fully traversable turrets, they can set up their camo nets, their binoculars, and they can truly be monstrous in most positions. Next up, mobility and the M10 RBFM or Sirocco is the same as the Wolverine with regards to its top speed limit, 48 forwards, 12 backwards. Definitely not great, and pales in comparison compared to the T67, which is at 61 and 20 backwards. The power to weight ratio, however, is abysmal for Sirocco. It's under 14, way worse than the Wolverine, and it's less than half of the T67. Combine this with slightly worse ground resistances, and also the track traverse compared to the T67, and you can see how bad this vehicle is at turning compared to the Wolverine, and it gets destroyed by the T67. And this truly is one of the biggest downsides of the vehicle, that unless you're going slightly down slope or along a complete flat surface, you're never going to get up to that top speed limit. And while the vehicle's rate of fire and accuracy was a little bit better than these other two vehicles in this comparison, to lose this amount of mobility makes it very unflexible. All right, so now onto the armor, and it looks like Sirocco is exactly the same as the Wolverine. And this really isn't that good news. If I put it into the live comparison, you can see that the whole of the hull armor is about 50 to 70 millimeters thick. That's not going to be bouncing much when you're meeting tier 4 to tier 7 tanks. Well, the vehicle does have this funny, I guess, plow or ram on the front of the tank that does count as some spaced armor. Yeah, it doesn't really add that much, and unless tier 4 tanks are shooting at your lower plate, you're not going to be bouncing much with this tank. The only way that you are going to be bouncing is with the turret. And luckily, do you see how well angled the cheeks are of this vehicle? And so when you're front on with your opponents, that means that if they miss your mantlet and they hit the side, they will ricochet unless they're firing heat rounds. The mantlet, however, again, it might absorb a shell or two against tier 4 tanks and some tier 5 tanks that have stock guns. But against most tier 5, 6 and 7 vehicles, they are just going to destroy you very quickly. And when you combine that with your vehicles and all of these vehicles, abysmal hit points of 360, yet you, you get one shot by most artillery. And you definitely get one shot by a penetrating M4 shell. A passing mention should be made to the vehicle's excellent view range at 370 meters, which smashes the T67. But... Unless you are with a fantastic crew, I would still recommend using binoculars on this turreted tank, but you probably could get away with coated optics if you're willing to use premium consumables and you min-max the tank. Finally, one of the most annoying aspects of this tank for me is the dedicated radio operator. Now, you might be saying, why is a dedicated radio operator annoying? Surely that takes pressure off the commander and you can have situational awareness on him to be able to boost that view range up further. And yeah, while that might be the end goal, when we take a look in the barracks, we can see that there aren't many French tank destroyer radio operators in the game and so unless for some reason you're a masochist and you're a fan of the amx ac46 the arl v39 or the sal 40 you're not likely to have a very skilled crew to put in this tank straight up or well for you're going to have the good fosh crew your commander your gunner and your driver and your loader are going to be excellent but your radio operator is going to be lagging behind and take some time to train up 
so you can get your brothers in arms working again and you can get camera rating and situational awareness on the tank and remember as you found out from my video yesterday to be able to unlock the tank you have to complete the first 10 days of the d-day challenge but if you want to get this special design, a unique style for the vehicle, then you're going to have to complete all 14 days. Anyway, that's quite enough jibber jabber. Let's get stuck into some gameplay. All right, so here we go. We're rocking my first ever game in the Sirocco. And I was thinking, where should I take my, my M10 tank destroyer here on this map? We're in a nice matchup with all tier 5 tanks. And I was just taking a look at the vehicle, seeing what its mobility was like, having a little feel for the traverse speed. And I was thinking maybe I should make my way down into this location and try and activate my binoculars and be able to, to spot out my opponents as they make their way here, because I've got excellent view range. Then I'm thinking maybe I should make my way up here into this bush. Perhaps I can spot out and see what I can achieve, see if I can get some nice shots across the valley. There's just so many opportunities and places to go on a map like Mannerheim Line, which is also called Arctic Region, I believe, in the game files, to be able to just engage your opponents. So I set up here in these bushes. I'm going to set up my binoculars, set up my camera net, and I'm going to see if I'm going to be able to go to town on my opponents that are located in this area. Unfortunately, because nobody's gone to this part down here, I'm not going to be able to spot. Because if I had gone here, I would be lighting up targets in this location, and usually you can then get some spotting for tanks that like to sit here. But because we don't have that vision, there's no point in sitting up here. And so I instead decide to turn my attention to fighting the Excelsior. And I have to admit, at this stage, in retrospect, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, what do I think that I'm playing? This is a glass cannon tier 5 tank destroyer with not very much mobility. And I'm about to go round a corner into a bush with clearly tank destroyers chilling at the back. I do manage to penetrate the guy in the turret, but wham, bam, two shots instantly through the large hull armor. And then a BDR is going to come round a corner. And yeah, that's all she wrote for me in this battle. So... I know I usually try and cherry pick my results for my, my tank reviews and especially for, for new tanks, but I just wanted to highlight that this vehicle is so vulnerable and it's not really very fast. Do not think that you can take this vehicle to the front line and not be punished very quickly in the game at all. This glass cannon vehicle would have probably been better suited to camping up in a location such as here along this ridge line. And alternatively, if I'd fallen back and used these bushes as the heavy tanks on the enemy team were advancing through this location, I probably could have had the mother of all farms. But one thing I quickly realized is that the Sirocco tank is definitely not a frontline brawler and it doesn't have the speed to be able to fall back if you get yourself into trouble. This is definitely a rear line vanguard tank. So while in the previous game we had the best possible matchmaking and we did absolutely nothing with it, in my second game in this vehicle, I tried to remember what I learned in the first one, and that is that I should try and get to the back and I should try and light up my opponents from long range with the great base view range of 370 meters and just stay safe. And yeah, I mean, the KV-3, he can one-shot me pretty much every single time with if he's using the 122mm. The AMX-1375, a light tank two tiers higher, able to kill me even if he only hits three out of four of the shells. The EBR Hotchkiss, yeah, we're using high explosive rounds on that tank. I am not going to last long. KV-85, again, a tier six heavy tank that could be using the 122mm that will one-shot me. There's so much to worry about with this vehicle that you have to play it at long range. We're going to take a punt at this AMX 1375. We damage his tracks, but unable to actually damage the tank. And just look how comfortable this vehicle is in a position like this. While its turret traverse isn't the best, you can set up your binoculars. You can set up your camo net. And with 10 degrees of gun depression, you can only give the enemies a shot at your mantlet, and that's if they're able to spot you. Because of course, we're at long range here, and while I'm probably not spotting the AMD, the tier 6 wheeled light tank on the enemy team myself, that doesn't stop me from shooting him if one of our scouts is trying to put some view range out. So we put a couple of rounds into a higher tiered light tank, now I turn my attention to a Panzer IV on the enemy team who's making his way through a very aggressive location. And he is not going to last long. But what kind of low tier tanks last long when they're caught out of position with a vehicle with 2,225 base DPM? When this thing is maxing out, it's probably starting to pack more like 2,500 damage per minute. That's absolutely outrageous when vehicles at low tier only have 300, 400, 500 hit points. Well, there's something that might be changing upcoming, but that's a completely different matter, which I'm not going to be going into great depth in this video as it's not confirmed yet. 
All right, so I actually learn l lunge forwards there a little bit towards my opponent. It takes me a while to get my binoculars back up. But we finish off the AMD, and now we're going to go to town on this KV-1. And this might give you an idea of how good this vehicle is as a free-to-play tank. We've got 130 millimeters of penetration. We've penetrated this KV-1 twice, three times. And we're going to man manage to penetrate him four times as well. That's a total of nearly 480 damage dealt there to the KV-1. A great result for the 76 millimeter on this tank. Now the Stug, I managed to spot the Stug 3G on the enemy team. I put one at him, two at him, although I'm rolling quite low with those shells. Well, actually, no, considering it's 115 alpha damage, it's not that bad. So we're unable to finish him off with three shots. But here we go. Tier 7 French light tank with an autoloader coming at us. He's got a, basically the autoloading version of our gun. We put one into him. I pull back knowing I'm being spotted. And I don't want to get hit by the Sturzwang 74 on the enemy team. But I'm going to have to kill him before he kills me. So we put one into him. We set him on fire. We repair our gun. We put another one into him. And one more. You can see how comfortable this thing is on that ridge line. And immediately now the AMX isn't feeling too happy about himself. My Skoda lunges forwards, puts one at the AMX, and I think about Teb Puddit trying to find a, a finishing blow on him, but we're unable to do so. But look, in just under three and a half minutes, we are up to 2,100 damage. That's over four times, sorry, five times the hit points of this vehicle. A really great result so far for the Sirocco. And, you know, most of that as well against higher tier tanks, nearly completely obliterating the AMX 1375. All right, so I go forwards into the bush, and unfortunately the Stug gets into a position right in front of me who's clearly going to spot me when I fire at him through the bushes there. I was thinking I might be able to finish off the Stug in a single shot, but we leave him on two hit points. Now the Stritzwang 74 comes forwards. I fire one at him, I fire two at him, but it looks like I was a little too cheeky trying to get that extra shot in, and he finishes me off by putting one straight through my turret. So my team managed to go on to, to win this game, and you know what? While I die... This was a great result, nearly 2,400 damage that we saw in a tier 5 turreted tank destroyer. It's not fancy, but if you do get yourself in a position at long range in this tank, it is capable of some wondrous stuff. And while far from the most epic, incredible game of all time, this was still enough to get us a high caliber in the worst possible matchup. We did three times more damage than anyone else on our team. Even the tier 7 heavy tanks were able to achieve and double what anyone on the enemy team was able to. And this nets us a decent profit of 104,000, but keep in mind that was with an action payout to 50,000 credits for some kind of event. And so this was actually a 54,000 credit profit game with a premium account or without a premium account, it would still be 33,000 credits. That's a decent result showing you that this is a real tier 5 premium tank that will make good credits, not incredible credits like a tier 6, 7 or 8 premium tank would, but it's definitely not a reward vehicle where you're probably going to be breaking even or losing credits if you fire a few premium rounds here or there. And so the Sirocco, well, this isn't going to become the new best seal clubber for all of you experienced players to pick up and go down to lower tiers and wreck your opponents. You'd be far better getting into a T67 for that, where you've got way more mobility, better camera rating, and even slightly better aim time and turret traverse dispersion for when you're sitting still. This vehicle is no slouch. When it gets going at a, a mid to decent distance with its impressive view range and reasonable penetration on its standard rounds, this thing is a very capable support tank. And considering that it's a reward that practically everybody can get, as you would have found out from my video yesterday in the D-Day challenge, which is a challenge for the masses rather than just a, a few no-lifers, I must say thumbs up to Wargaming for the entire way that you have managed this event. You're producing a, a premium tank which is in no way overpowered but still has desirable attributes and also a nice style to it, tying it in with history and allowing all of us dedicated World of Tanks fans to have a little bit of an early summer treat. And so that's it for today, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this one, or maybe it was just useful for you. If it was, give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And also, to celebrate seven years of making content on YouTube and Twitch, I have a limited edition t-shirt that I've designed with Teesprings that is available in black and white that you can find by clicking the more info icon in the top right-hand corner of your screen, or checking the links in the description or in a pinned comment down below. And yeah, just a massive thank you to everyone who's who has picked up one so far, and if you're considering to do so, yeah, thank you very much. It's a great way to support me and my content and the channel, and it's very, very much appreciated. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.